Otherwise, it is not a good morning. But it ain't raining. That's all we can say for it. It ain't raining. But it is grey and miserable. I've left it as late as I can this morning. Almost didn't get up again. But you know now. I tell you often enough. So, to begin. When I was younger... So much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. Now those days are gone, and I'm not so self-assured. And now I find I've changed my mind, and I opened up the door. I'm not a particular fan of the Beatles, but that song goes round and round in my head. Because I do need help. I don't take medication anymore because it done me the power of arm 15 years trusting doctors and professionals if your experience is anything like mine and I dare say it is because there's many thousands of us out there they're just using us like guinea pigs try this for a month try that for a fortnight oh that particular thing has given you that particular side effect. Take this other pill for that. See? Now that's not help, is it? Helping them. Helping them don't mind. Don't mind telling you. They get a good kickback off of some of these drugs companies. For prescribing. Endlessly prescribing. Stuff that probably don't work. And as much as they adhere to the Hippocratic Oath, do they really care? Hmm. Hmm. So, Help. When I was a train driver, if you couldn't fix the train yourself, point one, you was an idiot, back at the depot, because everybody mocked, but that's by the by. Point two, if you really did have a serious breakdown, you call for assistance. We used to call it international rescue. And if you had to call that international rescue, sometimes that meant your train had to get the passengers off, it was broken down and the train behind you had to get its passengers off to come and help you i'll tell you a story one day about one day sorry i'll tell you a story now about one day it was on the uckfield line remember i told you the world's uh, europe's worst run branch line i'm proud of that title to be fair Anyway, there we were on these old 1950s trains, 1992 or 93, and they hadn't been maintained properly. The, the, the maintenance staff did what they could, but the railway wouldn't spend no money. It wasn't a privatised line, it wasn't a top level, grade A, Richard Branson wants it type railway. So we was run on peanuts. Anyway, one day one of my trains broke down. Nothing could be done. It couldn't be helped. I needed a shove from behind. Which was not a problem. They didn't, it's not like trucks towing each other. These multiple units were designed to be coupled up together to make three car, six car, nine car. So that weren't a problem. Call International Rescue. I need help. Broke down. What's the problem? Blah de blah. Told him. So, my passengers, I did, I don't think I had any passengers. I think I was running empty. But anyway, never mind. The train behind me had to dump their passengers off at the station. 
further back and run empty up to where I was broke down. Coupled on behind me. Now, of course, I'm at the front, obviously. I've got no power. My train's broken. So my role in this situation now was to help the driver that was three carriages back doing the driving in his unit, pushing my dead unit. My job was to relay what the signals were saying. I mean, he got the AWS warning as well, but with the louder phone that I told you about some time ago, I pushed the buttons, and so on and so on. That's how we were meant to do. Well, signals don't come along every five minutes now. Not down the upfield though. And you knew exactly where they were anyway. Obviously, it was part of your route learning. You had to know where they were, even in thick fog. During fog and falling snow, one of my favourite expressions out of the British Rail rule book. That and uh, expeditious. Anyway, we were expeditiously rescuing me back to depot. So, further up the line, these passengers that had been waiting for my train, that didn't come, so that was an hour, an hourly service. The train that was meant to be coming behind me, that didn't come, because he had to turf all these passengers off. So these people could have been waiting up to three hours for a train. Now bear in mind, I'm at the front, like I said, signals are a long way apart. And there was nothing for me to do, except relay the signals. Well, I knew where they were, so I knew how much time I had between them. At the time, I was practicing my juggling. I was, so we had, I had uh, three sandy bags, all pretty colours on them. I know what to do to relieve the boredom. I'll sit here and practice my juggling at the driver's seat. So I did. There I was, juggling away with these three sandy, multicoloured balls. Looking like a bit of an hippie. Looked more like I'd stolen the train and was being paid to drive it out of the time. But there we go, happy days. Getting my assistance, my help from the rear. As we went through these stations where these passengers had been waiting, been waiting and waiting and waiting, and they finally heard from the distance a train coming. Hooray! Here's the train. Won't stop him, was it? It was me going back to the depot with the train behind me, pushing me back to the depot. And I could see them all as we passed through the platforms, picking up their bags, gathering their children and their belongings. I went up the day, carried on juggling. Give a little boom, boom, as we went through. Nothing I could do about it whatsoever. But the letters of complaint, oh my goodness. These people thought that the train driver was not stopping because he was juggling instead of concentrating on the driving of the train. <laughs> a digression, a digression, but it made me laugh. It's a funny story. Well, it makes me laugh, so it's a funny story to me. Now, yeah. Assistance, you see, I was getting assistance, I was getting help. I needed help, and I got the help. Now, going back to medication, and depression, and anxiety, PTSD, as I've been diagnosed with. I'm a little bit crazy, by the way. Borderline personality disorders, I've got. I have displayed sociopathic tendencies. Not, yeah, yeah, that's right, Socio, not psycho, psychopathic, sociopathic. Apparently I lack empathy, eh? That wasn't a good diagnosis, was it? It's been so full of empathy that makes me bloody ill. But anyway, more digressions than enough here today. Help. So I went to doctors to get some help, and they gave me pills. And they didn't help, made it worse. Now, I'm in a worse state. Well, not now, now. When I give up the pills, I was in a worse state than when I'd started on them. Because it makes you a slave to them. They don't help you. They don't help you. They enslave you. You're only supposed to be on them for about five or six weeks anyway, tops. So, if you've been diagnosed, and you're on repeat prescriptions, again and again and again, you need to be doing something else. 
different kind of help. Because those things are not helping. What you need, what I need, what we need, is help. There's nothing quite like the love of people that love you. There's nothing quite like that. That's the best kind of help there is, by the way. Because that replaces any pills. I am so blessed, so lucky, so fortunate to have the daily help and the daily love of a good woman. This morning, just like many other mornings, I would have sacked it and gone back to bed, put the covers over my head, and I wouldn't have heard all this bird song. Okay? And I, to be honest, I don't mind a misty morning. I don't mind it. It's still still got air, you can still breathe, still fill your lungs up. It's still helping me, better than any pills would. But doctors don't prescribe that. I walk in the country, I don't earn any money out of that, do they? Eh? I'm sorry doctors, I support the NHS and all that stuff. Who oh, knows I support the NHS? I've been delivering for it for weeks, for free. I don't want no money for it. I don't want no hero worship or none of that neither. None of us do, we're just doing our bit. But, but, I will not slavishly say that everything they do is brilliant. Because some of them, yeah, my GP ain't worth his wages. Ain't worth his wages. He was treating me, prescribing me these pills for years. Hmm? Then I packed them up. And after about eight or nine months, I thought, this ain't helping, this ain't working. I'm gonna need to get some more pills. I had another PTSD trigger, it sent me on a spiral. I was curled up, knees up to my chest crying. Adverts on the telly would make me cry. Some of you know what I mean. So I went back to the doctors, told them about my PTSD trigger. Do you know what he said to me? What makes you think you've got PTSD? Hey, yeah, this is true, I'm not making this up. And I'm not using it as a stick to batter anybody with. But it's the truth. What makes you think you've got PTSD? I said, wait, you have been treating me for 12 years. You, personally, have signed prescriptions for 12 years to help me with my PTSD. You're asking me, what makes me think I've got PTSD? How I did not put that man through his own office window, I don't know. Well, I do know, because my wife was there and grabbed me. So, I don't see that man no more. I don't take no more pills. I'll get my help from elsewhere. There's always another place to go to get help. You don't have to be a slave to it. That's what I think I'm saying today. We need help. We are poorly. There's lots of us out there. A good number of you listening are there yourselves. And po probably, possibly in a worse place. Because I am getting the help. But you need help. You need social the word don't know but you need to get out there among people even if it's virtually i feel i've said some negative stuff this morning but i'm feeling on top of the world actually i went out yesterday on my motorbike doing a photo shoot have all the mad things hey a man stays in a lay-by finds a nice bit of a bend on the a6 if anybody knows alex from biker picks cheers mate top respect and this man called Alex sits in the bushes at the side of the road on this gorgeous bend on the A6 from 9 o'clock yesterday morning to 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon taking photographs of all the bikes that go by. And because of that, because he advertised it, a few of us that hadn't seen each other for two, three months, we arranged to meet at Millersdale. Only about seven of us turned up. But it was a nice little bunch. We were socially distant. I was gutted that we couldn't shake hands, but we all helped each other, you see? It's a good bunch of people that I've got there. Dave, if you're watching, Dave and Mrs. Dave, very nice to meet you both yesterday. The people come from the other side of Yorkshire, they come from Staffordshire. One, AJ, or right, my brother, come up from Northampton. All together, just so that we could ride in a line, past this man and have our photo truck. It made us all feel a lot, lot better. 
folk. That's me done today. Some people are walking towards me, think I'm a nutter, holding my phone up and talking to it, which I am. Love you all. See you all later. Ta-da.